This is the Fixer Punk Podcast, the podcast that is tempted to excuse any and all overspending by saying, at least I didn't spend $250,000 for a ride on an unapproved, I can't believe it's not a submarine. But won't do that because this is the political and social issues podcast that tries to make your life better. I'm Grayson Peltier. Uh, so today is a Fixing the Fixer Punk episode. This is where I share from my personal life and my own journey to try to become a better person some insights that may help us to get a lens into ways to improve ourselves as well as improve society so we can perform better as individuals. This is really where the bridging the divide between personal and social change stuff comes into play and also gives me a chance to rant. Um, So on the last episode, I did mention the, uh, since it was just before the debt ceiling um, deal came through, I did mention my super kick party before the apocalypse which was going to be going out to AEW Dynamite Pro Wrestling down in San Diego. That did not happen, unfortunately. Um, and that was because I got kind of sick. I actually um, I woke up that day with a good amount of ear pain. I have to put in earplugs. And you should always, whenever you go to a concert, loud event, sporting event, wrestling show, Anything like that, you should wear earplugs. It is absolutely essential to protect protect your hearing and to protect your health um, at these kinds of events. But obviously, I had earache. You can't put, or you're not really supposed to put an earplug in if your ears are hurting. I was feeling a little bit lightheaded, feeling a little bit sick that day. Um, So I could not make it. Um, There were some good things um, on that night's show. Probably the match that I would have missed the most would have been an, actually a Ring of Honor match with um, Dark Order versus The Righteous. Um, but luckily, I did buy the ticket refund insurance um, on my ticket, and they refunded my money. I I knew that what from their website. Um, this obviously, when you buy an AEW ticket, it's through Ticketmaster, and it's they they work with uh, an insurance company called Allianz and what they require is a doctor's note for some sort of a medical situation so um i did do a uh, i did a virtual visit with uh, urgent care and i got the note um urgent care basically said it's a, it's it's a cold or an allergy exacerbation um and you should and you'll get better in a few days. It took it actually took more like a week or so for it to fully um, go away because it was with some sinus congestion, some of the other types of like typical cold symptoms. Thankfully, not COVID. Um, but I missed out on that night. Um, so I just hope that at some point they come back to LA soon, um, and I can have another fun night. Um, but overall, Justice has been a continuing storyline on these Fixing the Fixer Punk episodes. Random stuff keeps getting in the way. Basically, my life has been a case study in stuff happens. And it causes things to take forever. Like even just now, that's more macro, big event that I've been waiting on for months, couldn't go because I was sick, something really random happened. Um, but on a micro scale, like I just pulled, I was supposed to be recording this podcast probably at least an hour ago, but then something else happened, things that I don't even really remember because of my ADHD that delay me. I kind of stubbed my toe with a slightly sharp cable. Thankfully, nothing really happened to my toe, but I thought, let me just wash it off anyway. So that took another 10 minutes. So it is the constant cycle of stuff happens that that keeps happening to me and making things take longer than they should. Like even on like a micro scale, what I'm supposed to do for my ADHD recording to a video that I watched is to like time myself when I'm doing things. But that task of timing myself, like I have a whiteboard where I put up all the tasks that I need to do that I know that I'm going to forget. That one task of timing myself is just something that I 
have not gotten around to. I had it, I've had it up there for like three months. I need to like time myself and time how long it takes for me to do everyday activities. And I just have not done that. Um, I don't quite know why, but it's just because I don't think to even do the thing. So how else, how would I think to do the thing while timing myself doing it? Um, in fact, like getting any sort of like quiet, like uninterrupted time, even to record these podcasts is again, still a big issue. Um, and when like any of my like default habits that I have get interrupted, it's hard to put them back. And there are also like very, very random minor things that just acquiring those particular habits seems to have a sticking point to them. Um, like for some reason, I've kind of lost the habit of putting in nasal spray first thing in the morning. Um, it might be because I have to now do this, like I, I've added like 10 minutes of the this deep breathing resonance technique that the psychologist is doing on me because I'm getting some biofeedback done. Um, and he has me with this specific breathing app called iBreathe with a specific frequency that he set up for me of breathing. Um, and then because I have that, then I forget to do the nasal spray thing. After that, I just launch straight into the rest of my day. And then to try to bring myself back to do it, I just don't bring myself back to doing that. And then for some reason, I can get through, like yesterday, I could get through writing a, an article, uh, wrote a really good article actually on Orange Cassidy of AEW, AEW International Champion, my first article in probably a few months um, on ProWrestlingMusings.com, talking a lot about overwork and the myth of laziness and showing a different path to success that doesn't require excessive hustle culture, overworking yourself, or even conforming to like typical workplace norms. Really good article if you're interested in finding alternative ways to success or interested in social change when it comes to the workplace and work environments, or if you're interested in pro wrestling, um, uh, up at prowrestlingmusings.com right now. Um, but And I got through a, a pretty intense workout as well, even added on like my first little bit of running, which I was supposed to do like a mile. I only got, I only got like a third of a mile in. But I couldn't get myself around to, or or it takes. I I have I do these di difficult things, but then the little thing of putting on the acne cream at night for some reason trips me up. I think it's because my self control and my discipline goes a lot down at night. But sometimes it's just random little things that I can't get to. I also have I also for some reason struggle with the habit of like brushing my teeth in the middle of the day instead, like like at night. I'm fine. I figured that out. It still takes a little bit of time, still takes a little bit of pushing myself, um, kind of adopted a bad habit of like rewarding myself with food at night after I brush my teeth to, so that I can get myself through it. But that to me, like those little things like brushing teeth and putting on cream at night are like harder than like an hour and a half workout. I don't know why. Um, so the thing is that but then if you interrupt those habits in any way, then it's very, very hard to put them back into place. And one thing that I looked into to try to help me with that is there's this, there are all these apps like my Instagram, my feed, all of my, all of my personalized ads are all like productivity apps, programs, stuff like that. And there are so many of them. There are like tens, if not hundreds of them. And I bought one of these like productivity, mind enhancing performance apps called UltiSelf. And they had this program that's supposed to come with it that basically just teaches you all kinds of like about half to 75% of it is things that I already know. But the challenge is really the implementation. Like I open up my UltiSelf and it tells me I'm supposed to, and I'm getting better about this. It's helping me. It's making just a very small change in my habits. I'm supposed to be tracking like that every day in the morning. I'm exposing myself to the sun. I'm doing those breathing exercises. I'm doing the Pomodoro technique thing, which is supposed to be so you you sit down. You have a dedicated amount of time just doing one task, getting myself outside. And I'm supposed to um, track those in this app. And I just haven't really gotten... Uh, like I paid money for it. And this is the sad thing about like ADHD is that you get an app or something like that to try to track and help yourself improve your, improve your mental performance or whatever. 
And you will just let it sit there for a very, very long time. You just don't do it. And uh, oftentimes it's a matter not of like not knowing what to do, but of doing it. And it's hard to like remember that when you see, oh yeah, this thing that's saying they're going to fix my life completely if I just follow these five simple steps. Thing is that you probably already knew what those five simple steps were before you bought that app or that course. You just can't seem to bring yourself to do those quote unquote five simple steps. And that can be a bit of a drain financially. Um, I let myself slip and I'm like, oh my God, I just spent 50 bucks. I think it was like 47 plus $17. That's even more. That's like $64 um, on this course. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do this. Maybe this will help me. Um, And it's helping me a little. At least I'm acquiring that one habit of getting myself out into the sun in the morning. Um, I have to try to get myself through the other habits too. Um, And... Spending money, and and then the thing is that, is that really what you have to do is you have to find, and this this stuff though is more expensive, is you have to find stuff that gives you some sort of accountability, like that somebody's calling you, somebody's talking to you, checking in with you on a daily, regular basis. Like in the fitness space, I know that a lot of like these trainers that do like online coaching programs will do daily accountability, like daily check-ins, like over text or like in an email or something online. I don't know why that doesn't exist for like, excuse me, mental health improvement stuff. Like you see your therapist once a week, if you're lucky, and they give you a list of five, seven, ten things that you got to do that week. And then you get back to the next session, you're not even, you're maybe given a little bit of accountability at the next session, but you're not really given much accountability and nobody's checking in with you on a daily basis. I may be giving away a multi-million dollar business idea here, but why don't we have therapists that give you like a like daily accountability, like at least like an app where like you track all the stuff that your therapist does. It gives you or tells you to do. You get all the information. Even that breathing app thing doesn't really report back to my therapist, doesn't generate any reports or anything like that. Not that I'm aware of at least. Um, But like of all the things you're supposed to do to improve your life and then if you don't do them, then they call you or they text you or they ping you in some way and say, hey, Grayson, why haven't you been doing your journaling or your meditation or your um, or or your 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 sleep correcting protocol? Why have you not been doing that? And they check in with you in the middle of the week between sessions. That could be an interesting premium service. Um. But of course, when you're when you're doing things to improve yourself, you have to spend money to make money in many cases. Um, you're you're kind of wasting money, and I thought about this. I'm like, okay, I just made off of a bank bonus like a hundred bucks, and I spent sixty seven sixty four percent of that on this productivity app. It is so easy to let money slip out of your hands. It is it is incredibly, amazingly easy. And I do use spending tracking. I do use the Rocket Money app for spending tracking. The one thing that I hate about that app, though, is that it doesn't track the Apple card correctly. So I might, uh, I, I'm going to probably curtail my use of the Apple card just so I can keep my budgets integrated. Um, but you realize at some point that you can make more money from manipulating money than in some cases from like working as well so that the, that money that that slipped out of my pocket for the that online course or whatever it cost the company nothing to make that um but they made a bunch of money that honestly through work outside of the kind of work that i do as a political and advocacy communications consultant which I can get paid rather generously for that work, even though I, 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 I try to work with my clients' financial constraints or whatever, especially in the work that I do. But oftentimes there are times where I can make a decent amount of money doing that and helping people um, to advocate for their cause. Um, but like in the more general work, especially with like the off-season um, uh, the off-season lag in terms of how much business I get, um, it's um, the kind of work that you do to fill the gaps, like the like online work or whatever, like Amazon Mechanical Turk, like Clickworker apps, stuff like that. 
all those little things that you can do types of like flexible work um those things barely pay you. I could sit and do an eight hour work day and maybe make twenty, thirty dollars. And twenty, thirty dollars can disappear so freaking quickly doing so many things. And I could also just make that money appear by investing or saving that money. Like you can make a few hundred dollars off a bank bonus. You could make if you have $10,000 in the bank, you get like $100 extra in a year for getting an extra 1% of interest. But then I think about the wealthier people that have like hundreds or hundreds of thousands or millions just sitting in bank accounts and they can get even higher yield investments and all of that stuff. For literally doing nothing, you're making a lot more than you could ever make with work. People think that hard work creates money, creates wealth. That really isn't true. It's about how you manipulate money to work in your favor um, more than anything. Because you can make a lot more just from manipulating and money into different places. If you have it, then you could ever do as your individual self doing labor. And that's just one of the weird inequalities of capitalism. And... Interest, yeah, with the higher interest rates, yeah, I can make a little bit more money on my savings. Um, but that really doesn't balance out for like the typical working class person, even if you have saved a good amount of money, because what's an extra hundred thousand, hundred, hundred dollars, ten dollars, thousand dollars to you compared to millions in gains that other people are getting, gains from the stock market, from being able to buy low and then sell high years later. And in hard economic times, you're going to have to pull out that money. Um, so it's not going to be making you money um, any longer, or at least less of it's going to make you money. Um, still can be obviously worth it. And there are some ways to make money worth it a little bit more. Um, obviously, I, I do a lot. I, I, I do look for like bank bonuses and all that. Um, and you can, you can always scour for those. There are a few forums on like on Reddit, on bank rate, but you just have to kind of like pay attention to like bank advertising you see in the mail. Um, and then a few other ways to get like little money. That's like little amounts of money. That's like no work is just monitoring for like class action lawsuit settlements. There's a website called like topclassactions.com that has some of those, um, and and then of course making sure you're like using if you have the discipline to use credit cards which again this is a very careful thing i think i'm gonna have to have a whole episode on explaining like methodologies for credit cards but if you have the credit for it and you can and you have the discipline to use your credit cards in a responsible way number one thing is just to pay it off every week um i wish i could automate that process but you have to basically make sure that you're taking it out of your out of your um whatever money you're making so that it doesn't look like you have a bunch of money in the bank that you don't have. And then at the end of the month, you're with a giant credit card bill. That's the last thing you want. You will be paying it off weekly. Sometimes you can do it daily. Um, but if you have that cash back, that's also a way to basically put free money back in your pocket. And if you have different cards, you can use different ones that have different amounts of cash back per category. Like, for example, the Apple card will give you 2%. If, you're, if you go somewhere and you use Apple Pay... Um, but it's only 1% if you don't, and then you have another card that maybe will give you a higher percentage of a certain retailer that you shop more at. Um, but the key to that, to making that actually last and making that impactful in your life is to set aside that money. Don't keep that money as spending money. Don't necessarily try to put it, if you can help it, don't put it back on the balance of the credit card. Always make sure that, that money is somehow transferred out to a separate account, a separate high yield savings account in particular, and then keep that away from you. So it's actually money saved. So whether you're getting money from a class action settlement, um, you're getting money from uh, from bonuses, you're getting money from credit cards, your cash back, make sure you're unloading that into a savings account. If, you, if it only lets you transfer the money into your checking account, then transfer it to your checking and immediately set up a transfer to the savings. Um, and preferably at a separate bank where it's not immediately in view of you. Um, if you have to put it against the balance, then make sure you transfer that same amount from your checking into the savings account as well. 
because the last thing you want to do is have that money be in sight for you to like spend it. So at least the extra money builds up somewhere, um, somewhere that's separate from like your normal stream of spending. Um, but then uh, with bank bonuses, one thing that I've noticed is that there are a lot fewer bank bonuses that you can even participate you can participate in if you're a small business owner of 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 any sort. Because they like in terms of checking account bonuses in particular, there are ones for savings that don't, but for checking account bonuses, which seems like the majority of them now, the savings account bonuses for some reason seem to have dried up. Um is that they just basically discriminate against small business owners in these in these bank bonuses because they only take some of them will have rules about like direct deposits. Like one of the direct deposit rules I see most often is it must be a direct deposit from a from an employer or from government benefits. I think the reason why they put government benefits on there is because of social security and then of course social security disability. They don't want to be sued for some sort of disability discrimination. Um but you have to have a direct deposit going into that checking account and they won't take like it like in many cases they won't take like an ACH from a payment vendor like they'll specifically say no Stripe or PayPal um, or credit card merchant deposits of any sort or peer-to-peer transfers. Um, it has to be like a paycheck. Um and and that's to me it's it's to me it feels it, it definitely it definitely makes me feel like a second class citizen sometimes i can kind of get why the banks do that because they see employment as being like that you're financially stable but the ironic thing is that for small especially for smaller community banks small business owners actually are the ones that because our income is so irregular that we're the ones that are holding a significant balance in their institutions and making them money. And there's a good chance that we'd have to go back for, for a loan. If thankfully I'm not in a business that's capital intensive, but some people do have businesses that are capital intensive and they'll be the ones going back for a loan and love a good banking relationship. And they don't build that with, they don't build that by getting them in the door with the bonus because you have to have a, uh, a deposit from a, from a conventional job. Um, so kind of a kind of a blow on the bank's part, but I'm not gonna leave it to banks to understand like economic um, differences between people because that's just not what they do. We know that. Um, one other one simple class action that you're probably gonna be able to get a little bit of money out of, there's a good chance you can, is the Facebook one. There's one for Facebook data privacy. And now on that form, it does have like it has like a it has like a Zelle, PayPal, and direct deposit option. They're not issuing checks for the for these class actions anymore, for some reason. Probably cost. So you choose to direct deposit it into like a separate savings account where all your like extra money goes to that that you've gotten from settlements or whatever. The one thing that I do tend to get wrong with this kind of stuff is that because I'm shifting money around so often to get a higher interest rate, then I forget which money is like my extra money. But at least as long as it's not in like my main checking account, ideally what you want to do is keep all the like extra money that's just free money in a separate account that you don't see. But for me, as long as it's getting the highest interest rate possible and it's not in like my main spending that I'm not going to go and immediately spend it, then that's a good thing. Um, and then... Honestly, um, one of the things that I kind of mentioned was a bit of a financial drain is the fact that I've been trying to make my trying to eat healthier for a while, um, and I have thankfully I've I, I I'm not sure if I said this on the last episode, um, but I I did say that I have had difficulty with uh, my uh, with my fitness situation specifically in relation to diet, um. I did get complimented by a family friend um, at a party um, that, uh, that I looked really strong and even like just kind of suggested that I become a personal trainer, which is a little bit of a crazy suggestion, um, but I'll definitely take the compliment. So my fitness has gotten better, but I definitely went up in weight. I've been supposed to be cutting weight for summer, um, but I went, I did go up in weight. My lowest is like 157 at the, like in October of last year is kind of when I finished up my cutting phase that was so delayed from last summer. Um, but then I went all the way up to like 
like the beginning of this year, I was at like 160. And then I went all the way up to like 164 as of like a week or two ago. Um, but now I'm back down to 160 again. I thankfully for the past five, this, this is the, like the longest streak of me actually, um, counting calories properly. Um, I think it's probably because I upped my ADHD medication. Um, but I, I have gotten a good five, six days of tracking calories. It's, I'm pretty sure there's one day that I'm almost confident it's completely inexact, which was Father's Day. We had a big party. Whenever you have like family parties and like, and like food that's been cooked by somebody else, it's hard to do like the macro tracking on it. In fact, with the whole MyFitnessPal app thing, I have become very, very drawn and attracted to any sort of food that has barcodes on it. So it's like, because I, I, I paid the 80 bucks or whatever it was, so 60 to 80 bucks on that. Again, money flows out way, way quicker than it comes in. I would probably have to work on, to pay for that one my fitness pal purchase, I probably have to work on Amazon Mechanical Turk. And this is why I have like zero motivation to do work anymore because it pays so little. I'd probably have to work on Amazon Mechanical Turk a good two weeks or something like that to pay for that one purchase um but yeah i'm drawn to food with barcodes now because i can i can add it in easily i can just point scan i don't have to type anything in i don't have to guess as to what something is called so if i can eat all food with barcodes it's transparently like toward me then that makes things easier but in a way there's a bit of a perverse incentive to that because you can't have as much excuse me fresh food um, and that can be, that can be a little bit of a problem. That's what some of the clean eating people will say, but screw it. I'm not going to be cooking like large amounts of like fresh food anyway. Um, I have discovered a couple new, very helpful things because I tend to make a lot of like sandwiches and stuff like that. Um, the mission carb balance tortillas, like if I want to make a wrap or some sort of like, uh, a burrito or what or or something along those lines like oftentimes like i've got i've been able to like at least sometimes make myself a breakfast burrito or, um or i'll just make i'll just make like a, a sandwich wrap with that um and those are pretty good macros when it comes to tortillas uh, i think they're only like 70 calories each which is really good um, and then in terms of bread, I found the Nature's Harvest Healthy Habits 40 calorie bread. Um, oftentimes you'll find yourself needing two slices, but still two slices and only 80 calories. Um, it's been a good way to like make sandwiches. And then the new thing that I found, and I know last time on the last episode, I promised you do some like a Costco um, uh, grocery haul um for uh for fitness and fat loss but i just never got around to doing it i have the clips i still have i have the clips from i don't know from three four weeks ago on my phone i just haven't been able to sit down and do the editing i haven't been able to bring myself to do that another thing that i have to work on um but i will i will actually take the like one of these like just bare uh, like kind of like it's kind of like a fried chicken patty um and it's microwavable heat that up use the use a um zero sugar barbecue sauce a um the sweet baby Ray's uh, just zero sugar barbecue sauce and the healthy habits bread and maybe a slice of cheese and that will be like a really good sandwich i did that last night it was pretty good um so I can use these lower calorie things and still have something that's very, very flavorful. Um, or, and that kind of taste and then stuff that tastes like junk food, because again, my strategy is not to like eat cleanly. Like you're never going to find me like eating kale and chia seeds. You're not going to find me with like meal prepped containers. You're going to find me doing what I've at this point termed lazy idiot meal preps where I will get a those frozen lean cuisine meals um or whatever brand of diet meal is kind of on special at the grocery store i'll get those and then sometimes i'll add on top of it like i'll add extra like frozen uh chicken that's easy to heat up um some uh, sometimes i'll 
I'll add various ingredients to it so that's a little bit more calories because I can take a little bit more calories than like the absolute bare minimum. Um, and sometimes I do need extra protein because I do work out a lot. Um, and, and, and just basically slap together all things that are like frozen or easy to prepare. And I've thought about, okay, maybe I should start like chronicling some of my idiot meal preps and put those um but those is like tiktok videos but i don't know if anybody be interested in in them because obviously it's all rudimentary stuff like one thing that i kind of learned to do often is also like um taking pro um instant oatmeal protein powder and um the pb uh the pb fit the powder peanut butter because i like peanut butter a lot but the thing is that the macros screw me up like, because I go through so much peanut butter, that was probably contributing to a lot of my fat gain for a while. Um, but that stuff's pretty good, the the powdered peanut butter. But you have to mix it into something. Like, powdered peanut butter on its own, like a sandwich, it's, like, terrible. Um, but, uh, and I'll still, every once in a while, cheat and get, like, the regular peanut butter to do on sandwiches, even though I know that's not good for me. And I should, and I'm not doing that right now because I'm in this cutting phase um desperately trying to get to like uh to a level where i am where i'm in good in good beach shape but um if i mix that powder into oatmeal then it actually works and then especially if i add in protein powder to it um i usually get like obviously i'll get whatever i'll get whatever like protein powders on special at costco uh to try to save money and then I've, of course, I've told you all about the virtues of the fiber one seventy calorie brownies, um, and seventy calorie um, little cake bars. So I'm basically just substituting my old junk food habits with new healthier junk food, um, and it seems to work. At least I'm adhering to those um, uh, to those calorie limits, and the weight seems to be coming off. But man, it is still annoying because I am still definitely hungry. It's still pretty difficult sometimes because there's so much good food on. Even when you turn on TV, you see all these ads for things. Um, and I know a lot of people vilify fast food, but I, I do still believe you can still have fast food and do things well. There's a channel on TikTok. I think it's at flexcam underscore 91 that shows a lot of like ideas of fast food. Um, and also on Instagram, I think that same username. Um camden anderson i think his name is it shows like ways to do like healthier fast healthier options at fast food and i think that's a good thing there was somebody on tiktok who was talking about how like fast food isn't really cheaper and easier and faster but the thing is is that when you know if you know how to really cook well you can do things quickly in the kitchen but it's a lot of energy a lot of mental energy and for someone like myself that's chronically uncoordinated autistic and and that type of stuff is again really really hard to me like looking at a bunch of legal documents looking at a bunch of complicated numbers giving a speech easy but like actually cooking stuff that takes more than that that, that takes a lot of like steps to it is hard to me fast food can be a can be a a good thing if you know how to do it right um and there are ways to do it right so um, that could be also an option, um, an option too. Um, but really, really, I've, I've, I've been finding these interesting ways of just making things, making things kind of work for myself. But of course, with my adaptations, it's not going to work. Things are not going to work as fast as they would in like a normal program or normal progression. Um, and sometimes you have to let problems fix themselves in the way that they fix themselves in the natural flow of how a problem fixes itself. Um, ideally, you want to take control of things. You want to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable, performing well, and all of that. But sometimes you have to flow into the way the problem is going to solve itself and what's going to actually just work in the flow of time because stuff just keeps happening. It's like stuff keeps happening randomly here, 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 and here. And it's delaying things. It's screwing things up. But sometimes there'll just be a natural opportunity to solve the problem. Sometimes I'll walk into the grocery store and just find the exact thing that I need. Like I'll randomly now Costco has the Catalina Crunch 
um, cereal, and that's a good healthier snack or cereal. And instead of like forcing myself to and sitting around waiting for the perfect time when I'm going to have the energy to spend four hours meal prepping on a Sunday and making sure that I have my chicken, rice, and broccoli all frozen up and all that, I'll just I'll take the frozen lean cuisine meals. I'll take the replacement snacks. I'll take the things that I can do easily, and I'll use that solution right now that'll work. In terms of finances, maybe I'm not going to be the perfect ideal in the perfect ideal situation in terms of business or in terms of job or whatever, but I can take certain steps that will help me through right now. Maybe there are some things that you've got to avoid temporarily to make things work with you. Like, for example, I spent, even though I didn't go down to the AEW show, I spent quite a bit of money on like family birthday parties and parties and all that kind of stuff. Um, during May, but this month I haven't spent that much because I haven't done parties. So that's helping my budget. So, and it's also helping my fitness goals too. So you kind of have to flow into, okay, this is the natural flow of how things are. So we're going to plan to work with it instead of against it. Obviously I'd need to maybe be a little more intentional around parties. So I don't have like month, uh, debt lingering from month to month. Um, for doing those things on so that I don't extremely overeat at parties that I have to spend three weeks going into the gym and upping my cardio to try to undo it. But sometimes you just have to flow into how the problem wants to solve itself. And still, there is going to be, maybe right now it's not the right time for me, but there is still the dilemma that I always go through, which is the friends or money, pick one. It's not one of those things where if you're going to spend a lot of time out socializing or whatever that is that's fun to you, you're probably going to spend a lot more money for it. So there's going to be times where you can do that, times when you won't do that as well. Of course, with student loan payments coming back up, um, it is going to it's going to be a little bit more difficult. um, And I'm not sure which solution I'm going to try to force in one direction. Um, and I forgot to mention this on like the money side of this episode, I guess, but again, these episodes are super unstructured, so I'm just going to do whatever the heck I want with them. And if you have any feedback about it, anything that you think is wrong with what I'm saying or anything right that you, that you see with what I'm saying, or if you have other tips, ideas, tricks, advice for me, things you want me to talk about, just call 844-477-PUNK, 844-477-7865, leave a message anytime, day or night. Um... But there, there are, even though like student debt relief probably not going to make it through the Supreme Court, there is a there are some various relief options through the good work the Biden administration is doing. They're adjusting. They're doing something called a payment count adjustment for um, student loan forgiveness through the income driven repayment programs, and I think even through the public service loan forgiveness programs. So. Like if you consolidate your loans, look into that or you've had like you've had any times where you've been in like a forbearance or um, a deferment, like those temporary periods, which if you if if you're going to come up to September and you don't have the money to pay your student loans, then first step was income, the income driven repayment plans. Those can help. Then second step would be the. um, uh the deferments or the forbearances, which are available for different circumstances. But now they're going to start counting. Deferments and forbearances didn't count toward um, the 10 years or 20 years or 25 years, depending on your plan, to get forgiveness for your federal student loans. I'm talking about federal student loans right now. Um, But you can actually um, now possibly get those counted back in i have to look into i have some perkins loans from usc that i consolidated that had that had those forbearances on them so i have to look in and see if that applies to me i honestly don't know if it does um and then again i again i'm forgetting i'm forgetting things i needed to mention before but um another great thing the biden administration is doing is the affordable connectivity program last week was the affordable connectivity program week of action um 
and that's a program where you can get your internet thirty dollars off your internet bill. But you don't just and I mentioned this on a video on the TikTok. I think it's also on the Instagram at Fixerpunk. But you but you may be able to get more than just thirty dollars a month off your internet bill. You may be able to get your internet totally free if you're lower income, qualify for certain programs. Sometimes and and this is if you get a specific plan through your internet provider that is discounted. And then that discounted plan costs $30. So the federal discounts $30. You get it for $0. There is a page on digitalinclusion.org from the National Digital Inclusion Alliance about that. That's more free money in your pocket. Go and take the $30 or whatever you're spending on the internet. Automatically transfer that into your savings account like you would the money you're spending on internet. Um and I'll I'll link that in the description as well. Um, so hopefully you got something out of this. Obviously, these are more, more of my unstructured time to rant. Again, if you have any feedback, if you have any dilemmas in your own life that you think that maybe some of my weird solutions would help out with, um, if you think that maybe I should start reviewing doing those lazy meal lazy idiot meal preps um, on a video. Uh, you want me to review some of the thousands of productivity apps, I may need to start collecting money on a Patreon to be able to afford to buy a hundred productivity apps or even some of these like financial products out there, these like savings accounts, all these different financial services that are supposed to help you manage your money better. If you want somebody to like give you like an, an opinion on them, if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know. Um, you can call in 844-477-PUNK, leave any feedback at all, any questions, any dilemmas, anything you're going through in your life that you want to vent about and you want to have aired on the show, 844-477-PUNK, 844-477-7865, or via social media. Please follow the social media. There's more insights and content throughout the week. Um TikTok is most up to date at FixerPunk. Instagram also at FixerPunk. Twitter at Grayson Nation, G R E Y S O N N A T I O N. You can also email Grayson at OffSpeedSolutions.com. Um, if you are in the advocacy political world, you're gearing up for a campaign, you work on a campaign, you work with a nonprofit organization, or you're a mission-driven entrepreneur who needs help getting your message across um, through social media, digital marketing, conventional marketing, um, cultural analysis, content, research, all the aspects of communicating and consulting for running the business of changing the world. Um, I'd love to talk to you, love to discuss what you're doing, what the impact that your organization or business is trying to have. And I may be able to help you achieve your goals. Um, I have a good deal of experience in communications in both the political, nonprofit, and business spaces. So please reach out to me. Um, go to offspeedsolutions.com. That's O F F S P E E D S O L U T I O N S dot com. Email Grayson, G R E Y S O N, at offspeedsolutions.com. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, Thank you so much for choosing to spend some of your time today with me, and I hope I'll see you again on the next episode. This content is for entertainment and general informational purposes only. We do not warrant or guarantee the accuracy of the information herein. It does not constitute medical, financial, legal, or business advice. The listener should not rely solely upon such and consult a competent professional before deciding to follow any course of action. If you suspect any medical or mental health concern, please promptly consult a qualified physician.